Hi, I'm Tim Shotney and we continue to learn how to create our own Max for Life devices. In this video I want to show you how to create a gain audio effect for controlling the volume of a signal. This video course is a part of LearnSD project, which is an interactive web platform for learning sound design. You can do things like that there. Or like this. You can also follow our Max Life course on LearnSD website and get even more information about every lesson. The whole project is just starting, so it is really interesting to hear your opinion. You can write it in the comments to this video. I prepared here this drum loop for testing purposes, so let's listen to it. With this drum loop, we would be able to test all our max audio effects which we would build today. So let's start creating and go to this menu, open it and double click on max audio effect for creating this template. We go to editing and we see this beautiful window which is also called a patch. Patch, this is we do our coding. We have these boxes which are called also objects and they're connected with help, with help of these patch cords. So as you might know from the last lesson, you need some specific objects to change the signal flow and to change uh, the processing of sound inside of our Max for Life device. So it does some work for us. In the last lesson, we did it with help of low pass resonant filters. And in this case, when we want to control the volume of signal, we need some objects which would do this thing for us. So there are a few ways how we could do it. And in programming, these are always many ways how we could do one thing. And I want to start with the easy way of doing it. So for that, I go in this toolbar, open Max for Live, go to audio and press on live.gain. This creates for us this beautiful object, which is actually taken from Ableton. And you might already have seen it many, many times if you're an Ableton user. So we could use it for controlling the volume of a signal. Now we just take these two cables. I press shift and highlighted them both. And then we can just change the connection of, the, of those cables just like that. Now we do the same thing, but backwards. We take the output of this live gain and connect it to the output of plug out. So the first output channel would go to the first output channel of plug out. The same happens for the second channel. So now we just save it with some nice name, close it and test it. I change live.gain. You can hear it really works. I can even automate it by right clicking and pressing our show automation. Cool, it works. That was quite easy and fast, right? But this is maybe not the optimal way of doing it, especially when you don't need any kind of GUI objects. You just simply want to scale the, the signal by some value, make it louder, and you don't need any special controls. So we could do it with help of another object. But before doing this, before going there, I want to quickly dive into the basics of digital signal processing theory. I delete this ts.gain device, which we build right now, and zoom in very closely to our IDM drum loop. Super close. So we start seeing these little points. Those little points are samples, and each sample describes a particular moment of time in our stream of audio. So every point is actually a description of an amplitude value of our signal in a particular moment of time. And it's a numerical value. This is some number here which describes how loud the sound is in this moment. And when you have a lot of those samples and they're connected together like that, we get a waveform. And when we play back this waveform, we get the sound. So when we want to change the volume of a signal, we need somehow to scale this waveform. 
make it smaller or bigger. We could do it very easily when we double click on this sample, go down to this menu and change the gain. And it's now much softer. So we need some mathematical operation which would do the same thing for us. It would scale each and every incoming sample by some value and in the end make the waveform smaller and the sound softer. And the answer of how we could do it is by using multiplication. We need to multiply the signal by some value to scale it. Let's just go to a simple calculator and imagine that we have one sample with a value of 0 0.7. Good, this is just some value of some random sample. When we multiply the sample by 1, nothing changes. The amplitude value of it remains the same. But when we multiply it by 0, we get 0, so it's nothing. And what you could think is nothing in the sound. Well, this is actually a silence. This is silence, we don't hear anything. But this is just zero. And uh, let's go back now to 0 0.7 and multiply it by 0 0.5. And we get 0 0.35. This number is two times smaller. And in the signal domain, it would make the sound two times softer. So let's try doing it. We go back to original minus 6 dB here and create template, edit it, zoom in a little bit so you can see better, and then create a new object which is a multiplication object for signals. You just type asterisk, wait, asterisk, asterisk, and then tilde. Then you can just drag this object, press shift, and drag it right under this patch cord it fit, and then it fits perfectly. You can copy it and do the same thing for the second channel. Now we can specify here some initial multiplier argument. This is basically the value by which we multiply the input signal and all those samples in it. So let's try starting from zero for both of them. Save now by some beautiful name. Close and listen. And we don't hear anything. Congratulations. We did it. And we really did it actually. Because that algorithm works how it should. When we turn off this MaxWave device, we hear the sound again. When we turn it on, we don't hear it anymore. Why? Because we multiply it by zero. So as I told you, there will be silence. Let's try multiplying it by one. Save, close and play it back. Turn off the device so we can hear that no changes in our signal um, happens. So now we can try other values. Let's try 0 0.5 and hear what it means when we scale signal to make it two times softer. With it, without it. So it works. And now let's finally make some control, some GUI control. If we want it, of course. Maybe we didn't want it and we could leave it like that. But I want to make it still. I create again live dial and now I go to inspector to modify it. I go here down and change the range of it from 0 to 1. I also want to make unit style float. So it's a floating point numbers here. And now we just connect it to multiplication inputs, also called inlets. Objects have inlets and outlets, so inputs and outputs. Save it, now let's test again. Works perfectly. The only problem which you can maybe hear in this ts.gain device which we did is that we control volume linearly and that's not matching our perception of volume which is logarithmic. 
So we need to convert to have some conversion where we are able to control the volume of signal logarithmically, but in the end, make it linear. So control should be logarithmical. So GUI object should have logarithmic control. And in the end, we need to con convert it to a linear scale. And basically, what means to control the volume logarithmically? It means we need to use dB decibel scale. And uh, we just go back to editing mode, zoom in, simply take a prototype, which is called gain. But don't rush, don't save it, disconnect first th this thing, and uh, let's talk about loudness. Let's talk about values by which we multiply our signal. So if we would just leave this connection like it was before and start using our plugin again, it would blow up with this super loud sound. Why? Because when we multiply a signal, for example, by minus 46, what would happen is that, for example, this 0 0.7 will, would be multiplied by 46 or minus 46, doesn't matter, because the signal is bipolar thing. And then we get 32.2, which is super, super loud. And actually signals should be usually in max in range between minus one and one. So it's, we could say 32 times more loud than it should be. Because when it's one, the signal is equal to one, it's zero dB. And 32 would mean it's super, super loud and you don't, you don't want to hear the sound. So we need to actually convert these decibel values to this linear scale between zero and one. For that, you have a special object, which is called dB2A like that connected and then here we can already directly connect this outlet to the index in multiplication object and then just save it and use as you want and for the most curious viewers i want to show the actual formula which stands behind this conversion. This formula I have here, so it's saved in my snippets. Snippets uh, are like little patches which you can save and quickly reuse in many different cases. So this formula is happening here. So we need to take number 10 and make 10 to the power of the dB value, which is divided by 20. And then we get values in the end between 0 and 1. And even more than 1 if we go above 0 dB. If you want it, of course. So if I just take this object and put it instead of this dB to A, it would work absolutely in the same way. Great. Congratulations, my dear friends. So the only thing now, which is problematic here, is when I try to really fast, have a fast modulation on a gain control, then I would have a zipper noise. And I'll show you what I mean. You can hear it on these long decaying sounds. These are actually a lot of clicks which happen when we change the amplitude of a signal very abruptly. So we need some interpolation of this process. We need some smoothing. And that's what we would do in the next lesson. So I hope this video was helpful for you and you got enough knowledge for developing already things on your own testing. But Let's actually meet in the next video and continue improving our algorithm to make it really perfect. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.